and welcome to episode 61 of Namaste Yoga. We're continuing our series on the organ body today with the stomach and the spleen. And I'm here with my friend, Carrie Krenzker, regular guest on Namaste Yoga. So thank you for coming today. And Carrie just had a Thai massage, so she's kind of zenned out. If she looks, <laughs> if she looks even more relaxed than normal, that's why. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and lie back. You can rest back to begin, everybody at home too. And just start by taking a deep breath in through your nose and letting it fall out through your mouth. And begin to settle in. So today we're working with the spleen and the stomach and the spleen filters your blood to remove waste and old, cell, uh, old blood cells and foreign substances and then it infuses your blood with new immune cells. So the spleen is responsible for filtering out the waste and so just the same in our yoga practices we can let go of things that no longer serve us, let go of old or stagnant thoughts or feelings. And when we do so, then we experience clarity and compassion and sympathy, just like the spleen clears the blood of negative influences. And then when we work with our stomachs, our stomachs through food absorb the nutrients that we need and then they eliminate what we no longer need. So we reserve, receive nourishment through our stomachs. And this is, you know, on the level of the koshas, along the level of the food body, we receive nourishment through the food. But then this happens also mentally and emotionally and spiritually that we receive nourishment on all the different layers of our being. And even through our stomachs, we let ourselves be nurtured. Think about how our mothers nurture us. That And there's that nurturing energy through feeding our children food and so it's through our stomachs that we experience nourishment and nurturing. So as you rest back here just begin to ask yourself what do you need to release so that you can receive nourishment and the nurturing that you need? And how do you receive nourishment? How do you nurture yourself? And to begin today's practice, I have a quote from the Bhagavad Gita, and it says, Be of pure mind, escape the worldly deluge of mental pollution, because purity is indispensable to your spiritual growth. And I think this parallels what we're working with the, with the spleen this week incredibly well, because the spleen removes old waste, foreign substances. It filters out stagnant thoughts and feelings so that we can experience this clarity. And it's through this clarity we come to know our true self, our divine nature. So start to inform your intention for your practice today, for what you would like to receive. Just ask yourself why it is you're practicing yoga now and what it is you want to create in your life by doing this practice today. And then when you feel ready, just take your hands and place them on your belly to connect with your breath at your belly. And then move your hands up to your ribs and you can even take your arms and cross them over your body so your hands are embracing the outside of your external ribs. And feel breath movement here as your rib cage expands in response to your lungs filling with air. 
And then feel your rib cage drop back as you breathe out. And then move your hands up to your sternum, up to your heart center, and feel breath movement up here. And take your hands down by the side of your body again and we're going to do three part breath so that you're breathing a little bit into your belly, a little bit into your ribs, and a little bit more into your upper chest, and then you'll exhale fully. And this breath practice involves some breath retention. So um, if you have any medical reasons that you shouldn't be holding your breath, then just allow your breath to be continuous with this breath practice. So for example, if you're pregnant, this isn't a, a good breath practice with the holding of the breath. Okay, so take a normal breath in and a normal breath out. And then breathe into your belly. Pause. Breathe into your ribs. Pause. Breathe into your upper chest. Pause and be full of air, and then exhale. Breathe in belly, pause, breathe in ribs, pause, breathe in upper chest, pause, and exhale. Breathe in belly, pause, breathe in ribs, pause, breathe in upper chest, pause, and exhale. Breathe in belly, pause, breathe in ribs, pause, breathe in upper chest, Pause and exhale. Breathe in belly. Pause. Breathe in ribs. Pause. Breathe in upper chest. Pause and exhale. So keep doing that on your own Breathing in belly, pause ribs, pause chest, pause, and then exhale. And as you breathe in, draw in the nourishment and the nurturing that you need. And as you exhale, let go of all old waste, all old stagnant thought patterns and feelings that are preventing you from receiving nourishment, nurturing, clarity, and healing.
And then return to breathing normally. And just notice how you feel different in your mind, in your body, your emotions, your spirit. Just notice how that feels different now. Okay, so we're going to begin with a series called the Counter Rotation Series. So what I'm gonna do is demonstrate it to you first and then we'll do it together. And, um, but you'll have had a preview of it, which I think will be helpful. So you do it lying on your side. I thought you'd fallen asleep. <laughs> okay, so you'll start lying on your side and, you, and um, Carrie and I are using a pillow here and actually you can see how here this pillow isn't really even high enough for me because my neck is going down. So you want to, we'll, we'll just double up the pillow and then you can see that my neck is straight now. So a rolled up blanket or a rolled up yoga mat, um, blocks are a little too high for this. But something like that, just to bring your neck in a neutral alignment here, is really great. And then bend your knees up to the side. And the way it's gonna start is you're gonna stack your hands and you're gonna glide your shoulder blade away from your spine. And then you're going to glide it back. So it's the hand that's moving, but it's the, the shoulder blade that's creating the movement. And then you'll keep everything here, uh, back, pelvis, legs still, and you'll open your arm. And then you'll exhale and close. And then you'll do one where you hold on to your shoulder and you'll circle your elbow, reaching all the way around. And then we'll do one where you open and you roll onto your back and you roll into an open twist here. And then you'll roll back. Okay? So why don't you start by lying on your right side with your left hand st stacked on top of your right hand. And we'll exhale and glide your left hand beyond your right hand and inhale, glide back. And then stack your hands up again and inhale, open your arm. Let your shoulder be heavy, heavy, heavy. And exhale and roll close. And inhale, open. And exhale, close. And then place your left hand on your left shoulder and circle your elbow. And then circle the other way. Is that your shoulder, Carrie? Yes. <laughs> I bet this is feeling good in your body. Oh, it's crazy clicking. Okay, and then stack your hands up again, and you're going to 
keep your pelvis and your legs still. It's your upper back and your it's your upper back and your head that's gonna roll. So inhale, open, and then exhale and roll back. Okay, and then just um, release your head support for a moment and come onto your back. And feel the difference between your two shoulders. So this is what the practice of yoga does. We can experience this right now in the shoulder. There's this letting go of tension and then it creates this spaciousness and clarity and ease in the body and then it's from that place of ease and clarity that we can come to know our true self our divine nature okay so let's come to the other side so roll over onto your left side thank you Stack up. Okay, so stacking your hands one on top of each other. Great, and then you're gonna glide your shoulder blade away from your spine and glide back. So moving with breath here, exhaling, glide your shoulder blade away and And then hold on to your right shoulder. Oops, actually before that we did the opening. So inhale, open. And exhale and roll close. And then hold on to your right shoulder with your right elbow and circle your elbow. And then circle the other way. Good, and then stack your hands again, and this time you're gonna roll open, roll onto your back. And then exhale and roll close. And inhale, roll open.
Great. And then just check that out on your back again and feel the evenness between both of your shoulders now. Oh, that feels better. <laughs> Does that feel better for you? Yeah. Great. Okay. And then we're going to roll over onto our stomachs and um, do some a couple of things on our stomachs. So if you want to hand me your pillow, we, we won't need it for a while now. Great. Okay. So lie in your stomach. Mm. I tell you, do you find this? By Fridays, my body's like, uh-huh. <laughs> Is it break day yet? Yeah. <laughs> and then Carrie just gets up and does it again the next day anyway. <laughs> okay. Line your stomach. We're going to do some leg extensions. You can rest your forehead on your hands. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground, and you're going to breathe in. And then breathe out, lengthen through the front of your pelvis until your right leg reaches off the ground. Really focus on the opening at the front of your hip. And then slowly lower your leg down. Wiggle your hips from side to side. And inhale here. Tuck your tail under, lengthen long through your left leg until it reaches off the ground and feel an opening at the front of your left hip. And then slowly lower your left leg down. And you can reach, uh, bend your right knee and reach around and hold on to either your right ankle or your right foot. And keep opening the front of your pelvis into the ground. And drawing your heel towards your glutes. So some of you won't be able to reach all this way. You can hold up higher on your toes or you can get a strap and hook it around your foot. Okay, so release your right leg and bend your left leg. Reach around and hold on to your ankle or your foot and draw your heel towards your buttocks. And keep on opening the front of your pelvis into the ground. Okay, and then release your left leg. This time, take your arms forward. You're going to bend your right knee. Reach around and hold on to your right ankle. Roll your right shoulder back and up. Tuck your tail under. And then start to move your right heel away from your buttocks until your back lifts up off the ground. Your chest lifts off the ground.
and then slowly lower down and wiggle your hips from side to side to release your low back. And then switch sides, tuck your tail under, bend your left leg, reach around, hold on to your left ankle, roll your left shoulder back and up, and draw your heel away. Okay, and then slowly lower down and push yourself up and back into child's pose. And if you have knees where child's pose doesn't work so well, you can lie on your back with your knees to your chest. And then come back up onto all fours. And if you have your socks off or anything like me, Kara's good. <laughs> gonna need to take your socks off now. So we're just gonna do some cat pose, exhaling and rounding up through your back. And then inhaling and extending. And then slide your right leg to the back of your mat and you're going to um, leave your left palm on the ground and rotate open to your right side. Okay, so from here you could, if you wanted to, take your left leg out as well or you can stay here. And then come back center, bring your right leg in. And then take your opposite leg, your left leg to the back of your mat. And open up to the right side. And again, you can, if you want to do the full side plank, you can do that. You can take your right leg out, nice. Good, and then come on back center. And we're gonna do something similar. So I want you to open up to the left side again so your right side comes up. And keep your left knee down this time even if you did the full plank last time. You're gonna pick up your right leg and then you're gonna bend your knee back and hold on to your foot and open your chest. Okay, and then come on back, center. It's like a little bounce one, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then let's go to the other side. So slide your left leg back. And come open. Good. And then pick up your left leg. Good. Bend your left knee. 
Reach around and hold on. Tuck your tail under and open your chest. For me, this side is way more unstable. Was it was the other side for you? Yeah, that side too. That side too. Yeah. Okay. So let's um, do something that Carrie. It's gonna make Carrie scream like <laughs> like a little girl. <laughs> okay. This is a really big stretch for the fronts of your thighs and it's gonna prepare us for some of the standing postures that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be doing some Nadaranjasana today. So we're gonna actually swivel our mat so that we're using the wall here. So just, mm -hmm. perfect. And you can actually, if you're gonna need a wall at home. <laughs> um, and if you've got hardwood like me and then hard wall put your mat up the wall a little bit so you've got some extra padding for your knee if you've got carpet and under padding it won't be so bad but then you're going to come here and what you're going to do is take your left leg into the your left knee into that space between the ground and the wall so we'll we'll mirror them And so I'm gonna get Carrie to do the modified because Carrie does a lot of <laughs> crazy strength training. Mm -hmm. But so you can stay here, Carrie, and come up like this. Yeah, so, so you can stay whatever way along here you want. You might need to come forward and down, yeah. And then what I'm gonna do is show you the version if you would like to bring your opposite leg up and then come on up into the back of the wall so two different versions both good no better best just the one that honors your body remembering the principle of ahimsa non-harming okay if it's a competition, we're all winning. Okay, lower down, switch sides. Oh. Okay, ready? <laughs> Other side. I happen to know this is this leg is not as tight for me. So, bring your opposite leg up, or you keep it down like Carrie, and then come up right. And then slowly down. Mm, okay. And then I'll get you to make your way up to standing. And we'll just move our mats back and come up to standing too. Okay, from a standing position, take your feet right underneath your hip bones. Lift your toes and spread them nice and wide. Reach your legs down into the ground and lengthen your spine up. What's the Sanskrit name for this one? Tadasana. Tadasana. Mm -hmm. Carrie has a test on Sunday. <laughs> 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 we, can, we can drill her through the, <laughs> through the podcast. <laughs> Poor Carrie. <laughs> okay, so from here, roll your shoulders back and down, broad and wide. Interlace your fingers behind your back and then start to Lift your arms and open your chest so that you get a little bit of a back bend going. Keep your tail tucked under and your navel drawing back. And chin tucked. I'm trying to think of the navel, the bum down. 
name of the Oh, she's going to name the Bandas now. No, no, I can't name them. I'm Mula to think. Banda, Uriana Banda, oh, uh, Jara. Jara. Yeah. Jara. Starts with a J. Starts with a J. <laughs> We'll something look it up. <laughs> we'll put it in the show notes. Jar something. <laughs> That's the chin lock. Yeah. Throat lock. Throat lock. Yeah. There's a throat lock. Something lock. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Release down. Good. And roll your shoulders back and down. Okay. Ready? Draw your um, your left leg up. Hug your knee into your chest. So sta standing balancing posture here. <laughs> you know what, we were doing ankle rolls on this one last night. It feels really good. It's a great position to do it from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then circle the other way. And then you're gonna bring your knee around behind you and hold on to your ankle or your foot. Okay, roll your shoulder back and down, tuck your tail under, and then start to move your heel away from your buttocks. So you come into, carry Sanskrit. Na. Nata. Yes. Not around Jasna, good. Okay. See, it's just thinking of both Navasana. Navasana, yeah. This is not to run Jasna, yeah. You know your Sanskrit. Who knew today's show was going to be a Sanskrit quiz? Well, you know, saying the names, what it does, right? The vibration of frequencies in the body. Okay, and release. Good. All right, so then let's um, switch sides. So draw your right knee up now. Hug it into your chest. And then we'll circle your foot. I don't think there's a name for this. It's like when will you be posed? Yes. Oh, Apanasana. Yes. So when you lie down, it's Hatha Apanasana. When you st Hasta Apanasana. When you Stand up, it's, no, no, sorry, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so we need Supta Pandigastasana, Hasta Pandigastasana, so Hasta, Hasta Apanasana, I think, would be what it would be. <laughs> Okay, we'll go with that. All right, then bring your leg around and hold on to your ankle. Not a, well, we're getting there. Roll your shoulder back and down, not around Jasana. Bring your arm up. And let me just do this sideways so you can see. So as your heel moves away, your straight arm gets pulled back. And there you have it. So when we're working with the spleen and the stomach today, I'm working with the Tai Sen energy lines. And for the stomach and the spleen, they run up the front of your thighs like this, and then on either side of your spine. So this is why we're doing these kind of back bends and opening up at the front of the legs to open up those energy lines to, um, to work with your stomach and your spleen organs today. Okay, so take your legs wide. In forward fold here. So when you do it seated, it's called Upavisa Konasana. I don't know what it's called standing. Mm Hmm. 
Okay, and then from here, um, come down onto all fours again. Okay, you're gonna place your forearms on the ground and you want your wrists and your elbows to be equal distance apart. And then you're gonna tuck your toes under and press up into downward facing dog on your forearms. And now I know why my muscles in my upper back and shoulders are sore today. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this all week. Okay, come down and take a break and don't move your elbows and just look at your arms. Probably your elbows have splayed out. So you're gonna bring them back in, but let's just take a little break first. Maybe do a little bit of a shoulder stretch first. And then you can stretch your shoulder on the other side. Okay, so let's do that again. You up for it? Okay. <laughs> Forearms on the ground, um, wrists and elbows parallel, very strengthening for your upper body. Turn your toes under, exhale and come up. So now here's the part. You can stay here or you can walk your feet in towards your elbows and then walk them back out. One more of those should be good. Yes, that's enough for me for today. <laughs> Good. Oh, okay. Release. All right. So this is this. These forearm uh, down dogs and the walking in are good practice poses to prepare you for inversions and particularly the elbow version. So that's in preparation for that. So if you work with a teacher in a studio, you can. Um, you know, you'll be preparing towards doing those ones. Okay, you're going to come back down onto your stomach and we're going to go back to that back bend. But first, we're going to do it um, a way that we were working on my, in my Thursday night classes. I have a lot of students that have knee issues, so we've been finding some ways around knee issues in these um, bow poses. Do you know bow? Do you know the Sanskrit name for bow? Dhanarasana. Dhanarasana. Oh, Dhanarasana. Dhanarasana, yeah. So um, this is a way to get around it if you have a knee issues. So you're going to tuck your tail under and walk your elbows back like you're doing Sphinx pose. And then you're going to just bend one knee in. and release, and bend the other knee in. And release, and you can try both knees too. Good. Okay, and then you can release and lower down. Okay, and then just wiggle your hips from side to side. So if you have any knee issues, you can use any one of those variations for when we do, we're gonna do half bow again, half bow, and then we're gonna do full bow. So you could do one knee up like that with the sphinx arms or both knees with the sphinx arms. You can choose. Make sure to look after your body. Okay. So here we go. Arms are out front and bend your right knee in. Reach around and hold on to your right ankle. Roll your right shoulder back and up. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground. Breathe in to prepare, breathe out. Heel draws away from the body and lifts the torso. Good. 
Good, and then slowly lower down and release that side. Wiggle your hips from side to side. And then your right arm comes forward this time. Bend your left knee, reach around and hold on to your left ankle. Roll your left shoulder back and up, big breath in. Breathe out, move your heel away. And then slowly lower down and wiggle your hips from side to side. Okay, let's come up and back into child's pose just before we do the full version. Don Arasana, that's good. <laughs> Okay, and then slowly up and come back down onto your stomach. So we're gonna do the full version. And remember, you can do the Sphinx with the both knees bent if that's totally good option. Okay, you ready, my dear? Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing to watch here is that when we bring our legs up, the tendency is for the knees to splay out. So you wanna just keep your um, hip, knees, ankles all on the same line. So, lying flat on your stomach, tuck your tail under, bend your knees and reach around and hold on to your ankles if you can reach, feet if not. Tuck your tailbone under, roll your shoulders back and up, breathe in. Breathe out, pull your heels away. And I'll lift your chest. And then slowly lower down and come up and back into child's pose. Whew. And then come up to seated and sit in a comfortable cross-leg position. Okay. Okay. Wow, today's time has gone fast. <laughs> I just got the 55 minute mark. All right. Okay, we're gonna rotate Take your left hand to the outside of your right knee and lift up nice and tall. Other side. Do you know the name of this one? I don't know the name of this one. Jeff. Something twist. Maybe cheese twist. Okay. It's something. Twist. Marici is this one. Okay. Matsi is this one. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is called. Easy twist. Easy twist, yeah, <laughs> but I'm not sure of the Sanskrit. 
Okay, and then come back center. Now take your legs straight out in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, and then bend your left knee in and open your left knee out to the side. Okay, so now rotate towards your left knee so you're twisting again. Yep. Okay. And then keep your torso turned towards your left knee. Take your right hand to the inside of your right leg. Slide forward so you come into a forward fold and bring your left arm over. Do you know what this one's called? Mm. Mm. So this one, when you're forward facing like this, it's Janu Sursasana, right? So then I think when you revolve it, it's Pravriti Janu Sursasana, I'm assuming. Yes. That's right. She's going to get an A on her test on Sunday. <laughs> All because we here at NYU helped her study. <laughs> Okay, so come on up and turn and face front, switch your legs. So bend your right leg. Yeah, this is good. I like how Carrie's lifting and pulling the flesh out. That helps you to sit up a little taller. And then turn towards your bent leg. And then you're going to keep your torso turned this way. Take your left hand to the inside of your left leg. Fold forward. And then your right arm comes over. And gosh, that's always so tight for me on this side. Yeah. Especially if you're doing Pilates. <laughs> it's right, the quadratus lumbar down. Oh, so tight. <laughs> Slowly up. Good. And then you can rest back for Shavasana. Okay. So in Shavasana, I'm going to read you a poem today. It's a poem by Donna Falls from the Kripalu Center. So she writes poems about her yoga experience. And this one is called Release. And I think it speaks really beautifully to our theme of working with our spleen and our stomach today, the spleen, that purifying energy of re releasing what we no longer need and the stomach, then that nourishment that we receive when we're clean and pure. I lay myself down on the welcoming ground, the earth's spine becoming mine. Peace seeps into heavy limbs and slows my heartbeat to the place of nature. I take refuge in the quiet and let my burdens go one by one until the earth and I both float in the same vast and holy silence. So as you prepare to move back out into the world today, ask yourself, what do you need to release so that you can receive nourishment and nurturing? And how will you nurture yourself in the coming days? And then one more time, that quote from the Bhagavad Gita, be of pure mind, escape the worldly deluge of mental pollution because purity is indispensable to your spiritual growth.
And please stay resting back for another five or ten minutes or so. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Namaste Yoga. Thanks again to Carrie for coming and staying after a massage. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.